Welcome to the Influence Experiment, where we seek to explore the art and the science of building influential capacity. Every month, we want to raise thought-provoking ideas of how you can be an investor of the influence you carry. If you're ready to journey with us, then it's time to experiment. Hey, hey, what is going on, my fellow learners and leaders? Welcome back to another episode of the Influence Experiment as we continue to learn how to invest our influence well. My name is Tony Villafane, and I am your humbled uh, host today as we uh, continue this conversation around leadership uh, and, and discussions around how to lead when you're not in charge. Let's face it, we don't like not being in charge. <laughs> when we don't have the power uh, to call the shots, when we don't have the title or, or, the, or we're not the main leader, we, tend, can, we can tend to be passive in our leadership or we can claw our way to leadership. But great leaders, whether they have the official authority or not, the title or not, they live in the tension and learn how to be an influential presence wherever they are. They learn how to lead themselves, live with authenticity, think critically, follow courageously, and challenge up. Leadership can be and should be cultivated wherever one, uh, whether one has a title or not. So we want to have a discussion around that very thing of how to lead when you're not in charge. And today, around the leadership conversation, joining us today is leadership executive coach Tiffany Lentz. Tiffany, girl, thanks so much for joining me today. I am so glad to be here. I loved this topic when we spoke about it together, mm -hmm. this bump um, at our leadership seminar. I love it even more now. I am I'm so energized by your energy around this topic. The, even the title of the Influence Experiment, such a great title mm -hmm. for your podcast. Very creative. Love it. And, Thank um, you. and super applicable too, mm -hmm. because anything and everything regarding leadership and hum and just the um, the connection that humans make is all so very experimental. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. Uh, experimental indeed. And you again graciously said yes um, uh, a long time ago uh, to help with this uh, seminar that we covered and on how to lead where you're not in charge. And so to be able to now take this into a podcast, um, I am super appreciative of your time uh, to be able to do this. Would you be able to share a little bit about yourself? Why even are you invited around this type of topic or, or uh, idea. Could you share a little bit about who you are and why yes, you're here? Surely. It is one of my favorite topics by far. I feel like I am, I'm sort of drawn to leadership anything. Even if I'm just like watching a sporting event, I'm kind of watching the coach and how they're behaving, how they're reacting. Um, so it, I sort of see it uh, as like a lens mm -hmm. in most of my general life. But I've had a pretty, pretty varied and um, very fortunate, interesting career in that I've been I've been able I have two degrees in psychology and two degrees in music nothing to do with corporate America whatsoever great um, but someone who was a phenomenal leader saw some interesting soft skills in me that could be cultivated at a young age and I'll be forever grateful for that uh, but I was able to move into corporate America and learn how to be a, a technology consultant uh, about 20 years ago awesome. so I was able to to learn um, how corporate America works how international business works um, also worked quite a bit in uh, the nonprofit space mm -hmm. mostly with technology solutions and coaching executives yep so it's been a it's been a wild ride Love but that's it. I've sort of built my my credentials on the street, if you will. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And thanks for, yeah, just sharing a little bit about, about that. Um, and I am looking forward to being able to delving um, back into this once again with you. Uh, so let's kind of, let's just go there. Let's, let's di dive it. headlong in. Uh, what would you say are some of the lies that we can believe if we're being honest within our finiteness and our humanness lies that we can believe uh, about the topic of leadership? What comes to mind? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is something you mentioned so aptly in your introduction, which was the, the very idea that we all love authority. Mm -hmm. We love authority, yes, we, we crave do. authority. Uh, and it is a complete illusion that authority and leadership are the same thing, that mm. one makes the other effective. Yeah. They can support one another, they can completely destroy one another. That's so there's, a, there's yeah. a symbiotic relationship there, but having authority does not make you a leader. Having authority does not make you a good leader. In fact, it can cause quite a bit of resentment if you are a person in authority, if you have what one would call positional leadership. Yep. So mm -hmm. that, that in and of itself is a lie. Um, positional leadership doesn't guarantee people will follow you. And if you are false or uh, not transparent or um, inauthentic in your leadership, you can almost guarantee people will not follow you. I mean, we have 
umpteen examples in the, the political realm, in the, in, um, the arts, in the last 10 years of groups of people rising up and saying, I'm not going to follow this group of people anymore because of their inauthenticity. Sure, yeah. No, I think that those are two uh, really um, excellent examples to speak towards uh, that, uh, especially when you think about positional leadership uh, and how we can believe that live. Like, yes, if I have the title, therefore I have the authority. I think mm -hmm. you beautifully spoke to uh, authority does not equal leadership. Leadership does not, like, not, does not equal um, authority. And and I think that um, that's, a, that's a pitfall that we need to avoid um, and to understand that just because I have the title does not mean people are going to respect me. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that I have the authority in other people's mind space and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there, there, those are some, those are some foundational thoughts that we need to we need to understand uh, about leadership as we look towards leadership titles specifically. Uh, there, there's a there's a quote uh, that that I, that I've heard um, that that reads this: If you fail to cultivate influence when you're not in charge, you will have no influence to leverage when you are. Influence always outpaces authority. Speak to this quote for a moment. That is such a true set of statements. I, I, I have very little to add to the quote. I mean, <laughs> it's profound. It, it's profound. It's really it's, profound. And, and it, it captures the essence of the reality of influence. Hmm. Influence is something that is not given. It has to be taken. It has to be grasped, and I don't even like the word "taken." As I yeah. said, it it sounds it sounds um, sort of possessive and self-serving. Influence is something one leans into, mm -hmm. typically because that's what you're you're called to do that in one way or another. Um, and we have numerous opportunities to influence. One can influence their parents, their kids, their neighbor. Their, you know, everywhere we look, there's an opportunity to influence hmm. one person or another on different scales. So the the idea that failing to cultivate influence when given the opportunity then doesn't provide you a way to leverage it is absolutely true. Mm. It's it's valuing the small things, yeah. the small baby steps of one's human interactions, treating each other with respect, mm. um, serving, loving, uh, what, embracing sort of the, the internal motivation of what will eventually become broader leadership. Yep. Um, so I think of I think of that quote from the perspective of leaning into the the small moments of building a relationship is what cultivates influence that then sets you up for effective authority. Well, I think that part of it, you, you, you're spot on to say that it's the small moments where when we think about leadership, we think of the lofty positions and the lofty goals and uh, events and, and massive organizations that we get to lead and, and whatnot. But really, it's these small moments mm -hmm. uh, of, of how am I using my influence um, and how am I choosing to do this well with excellence and with intentionality? And I think that the word, uh, that, that the ending of that quote that says, influence always outpaces authority, like, that is so true. Like we've heard the phrase, your reputation precedes you. Mm -hmm. That is how true, how, how many times true have we seen right. that lived out in our own life or mm -hmm. about someone else um, mm -hmm. in good and bad ways mm -hmm. that their reputation precedes them. Influence always outpaces authority. Again, another foundational idea that we need to know when we are looking about titleized leadership versus non-titleized mm -hmm. leadership. Uh, one of the things that I know that you're really passionate about is identity. Mm -hmm. uh, help us understand this for a moment. Why is understanding our identity so vital in healthily living out our leadership? This is a topic in and of itself, but... For sure. <laughs> it, I, identity, for me, as I've been exploring this in my own life as a female executive, as a believer in Christ, as a, um, a woman serving in the church, uh, as a single woman, I've been exploring identity it for many, many years now, it, it's a, it's a defining state. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a foundation. So leadership application constantly changes. One can change jobs, churches, the state you live in, neighborhood, anything and everything can be subjective. Uh, you can be promoted, you can be fired. Mm -hmm. um, you can start, you can be a leader at a, at a, at a five person startup or lead 400 people um, in a in a, a large organization, it's a constant state of change, where your identity, how you show up, what elements you bring of yourself, how you cultivate your internal health, hmm. those are 
those are your defining state. Yeah. So for me, that's the definition of identity is, is who am I? Who does God say I am? Yeah. What has he called me to do? And then the, 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 the constant change is applying that in mm-hmm. every different instance. Yeah. Um, I'm having the privilege right now at work of watching an amazing leadership shift from two amazing leaders. Mm. So our firm is a uh, um, privately held company CEO founder, 20 years old, and he's an amazing, humble leader. Mm. He just retired within the last two months. Mm. And the person chosen to take his place is a woman who's in the firm, who's now stepping up into the CEO leadership uh, position. That's a formal position, right? But she's been cultivating her position, her identity in that firm for almost 10 years, cultivating individual relationships, larger corporate relationships, um, and is as she steps in, she's almost the definition of diplomacy and the way she approaches the mm. problem, different personality, but watching her identity show up in big and small arenas, yep. uh, moving from just influencing in a, in a position of leadership to a position of CEO yeah. has been quite different, mm. but I'm, I'm able to take um, a seat and watch how this is unfolding yeah. uh, and, and gain quite a bit of additional respect for her and the way she's approaching that constant change. She knows what her identity is. She's this, she has this constant application of change as her audience has shifted. Hmm. Well, and I think that what's so neat about that specific example is we're talking about identity and how uh, identity is, 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 should be a fixed thing through our seasons of life. The titles that we have, those aren't those aren't usually fixed. Mm-hmm. Are they ever change, ever flow, ever evolve? Um, but our identity is is should should be operative mm-hmm. word fixed and 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 locked in and focused and. Um, but we don't do that so often because our, our, our minds are, are, we get jealous and we compare and, and we compete with other people and, and our, our identity gets tempted to be thrown out of sorts and, and, and discombobulated. While as you're, you're saying this, like this individual for 10 years was focusing, um, again, we, we won't say that she was perfect, but of course not. not I uh, made mistakes, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but even in mistakes, uh, there was maybe a consistency of this, this person's identity of, of, of I'm focused on who I am. I'm locked into who I am. I'm content with who I am. Contentment is a big word uh, when we think about our identity that many of us wrestle with. I'm guilty of that myself. Um, uh, but there is a fixedness within our identity as the seasons of leadership ebb and flow and change. Um, and, and, and there is a, there's a big discipline that we need to think on and how we, how we do our identity well. Um, as Jesus followers, how do we have it fixated on on Christ um, and 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 how He's gifted and wired us and the temperaments that He's given us? Uh, so it, it, it's a you're right as you said at the beginning of this question. It's a whole other topic. It's a whole other episode that we could cover right well, around identity. But I think that that is a that it 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 is absolutely needed to discuss in the realm of identity. Uh, Within, within this idea of trying to lead when you're not in charge, a word that comes to mind for me is the word ambition. And ambition is a funky word. Mm-hmm. It's, fun, it's fun and it's funky. Uh, and what is this line with ambition? Uh, what is it? What's the line with it? Uh, what are healthy responses or unhealthy responses when it comes to how do I pursue leadership, whether I have a title or many times when I don't have a title? How do I deal with this thing, ambition, of me wanting to pursue leadership? Mm-hmm. How do I deal with that? That's such a great question. Ambition, in my experience, is a concept that, has been really abused over Mm. um, 50 years or so, misunderstood, used as a weapon, uh, depending on who you are and what position you are, being ambitious is a good thing, being ambitious is a criticism. Um, I'm excited to see generations of young people who are embracing the concept of ambition. And then I also see that that fine line sometimes being crossed in terms of, is this ambition driven from a healthy place or is it driven from a selfish place? Is it driven from a, with long-term goals in, in, in mind and, uh, and uh, serving a greater good, leaning into one's calling, mm-hmm. um, cultivating the internal why. Why am I doing this? Why, what's driving my, is my ambition driving something that's good for me? Is it driving being of service to others? Yep. Is it driving, you know, the mission of the gospel? Um, 
that those are solid motivators for ambition. And then we cross that line to, but I, I really just want this thing. Hmm. I want it for me because yeah. I want it. So uh, there's, there's always a place to watch something that is, it, are we managing a- ambition? I think ambition is very biblical. I think the mm-hmm. idea of yeah. um, being called to be co-laborers, mm-hmm. being created to subdue the earth, being just a, in there's spa- so much space in scripture for ambition to be a very healthy God given sure. thing yeah. uh, that we shouldn't shy away from it, mm-hmm. but we should see it from the lens of our identity, from the lens of I am here to look like Christ. I'm here to serve other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that helps, that does kind of help balance the tension, live in the tension, embrace the polarity mm-hmm. instead of running away. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like, uh, I you just said, I love that you said, because I agree that it's found in scripture. It's it's something that even as Jews as far as we're supposed to pursue ambition, but there's this there's this fine line of how am I choosing to live within um, a selfishness and, and uh, a prideful ambition um, mm-hmm. to make it about me? Uh, mm-hmm. Or um, how am I choosing to, in, almost in a weird way, I'm abdicating my own leadership because uh, yes. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to be too ambitious. I don't want to be too, no, like, like, and you, you flee, uh, we mm-hmm. reluctantly flee from leadership opportunity or, or influence because we're like, oh, but I, I don't want to be prideful or, oh, I don't think I'm worthy or good enough. Both of them are unhealthy responses. Absolutely. And so how are we choosing to walk this narrow line of it's not about reluctant, uh, re- being reluctant to my leadership and it's not about being a reclusive and it's also not about clawing for it and being, um, dare I say, narcissistic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it's all about me, 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 and, and trying to make the, the this title, uh, this leadership position um, mm-hmm. about me, rather this selfish mentality, how we pursue a selfless mentality within our ambition. So much easier said than done. Oh my, yes. But so needed. Yes. <laughs> At the same time as we try to walk this fine line of healthy, mm-hmm. holistic, influential leadership. Yes. Um, and so, something that has, it's like you never take your eye off of it. Mm. Uh, probably like a relationship with your wife. You never, you never stop cultivating that thing. Yep. Um, never stop cultivating healthy friendships. You can't ever stop uh, watching to be sure that you are staying in line with what you were created to do how we, and how you were created to do it yep. as opposed to the way that you, that one would pursue it yep. from more selfish nefarious no. means. And mm-hmm. you know what else is sad about that topic is that so if we're not if we're not constantly watching the why, only we know what's going on inside, right? Mm-hmm. People it, it, it's it's always disappointing to me when there's someone that maybe we've respected and then 30 years later you something's uncovered. It's like, "Oh, you oh, were the yeah. biggest fake yeah. on the planet." Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I mean, we have a fresh start with different new generations of leaders who I think are pursuing authenticity and transparency. Um, that does help us keep embracing that polarity yep. and keep our ambition in check, but also lean into it yep. to reach fullest potential. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so as we try to dive just a little bit deeper into how to lead when you're not in charge, uh, let's talk about some, some nuanced ideas. Number one that comes to mind is uh, leading yourself. What does that look like in the area of trying to lead when you're not in charge, leading yourself specifically? This is a great question and one I actually get asked quite often because I do mentor people and mm-hmm. coach them and some some younger in their careers and developing and trying to understand exactly what that means when, when they don't feel like they're in charge of something. But let's go back to uh, an early topic of conversation around the idea of of everyone having a place of influence. So it is It is the small things. It's the everyday things. It's how, how are you cultivating yourself as a reliable person, mm. a thoughtful person, yep. an intentional person, a careful person. There are, there's all sorts of, uh, un, of accepted rules around if you can't manage a little bit of money, why would someone give you a lot of money, sure. right? Yeah. So this it applies the same way here. Um, just simply being a generally disciplined person person. I'm not talking about going to military school or anything, (laughs) but I'm I'm saying like we all can um, embrace areas to be accountable, to take on responsibilities, say yes to something and then show up, Mm -hmm. um, complete, uh, uh, under commit and over deliver on in small ways, whether that's interacting with one's parents or a teacher 
uh, or whether it is doing some service at church or some community service, uh, or if it's in a corporation. You mm-hmm. can always show up as an accountable, thoughtful person. Yep. Um, I think, again, this is, this is how we start to be people of influence. We're, we're now known as, you know, Tony is someone who always does what he says he, he's going to. Mm-hmm. If you can count on it. Yeah. He may not be right, but if he said he's going to do it, I can count on him. Sure. Right. Uh-huh. I, 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 th- I think I really do believe, and we looking at just younger generations of employees that I tend to interact with um, these days. I sound like an old person. I'm only 46. <laughs> my gosh. But this, this, this thriving, um, energetic, younger generation, they would so much rather have a leader be transparent, state what they're doing, make a mistake, own the mistake, learn from it and keep on going. It's like, sure. this is, this does not have to be that complicated. Sure. Yeah. And that, that's all that they are looking for leaders to exemplify that kind of behavior. And I see a lot of younger people who are holding themselves to that standard yeah. as well. They're not mm-hmm. afraid to be a person of influence mm-hmm. and then make a mistake and own it and keep going. So yep. that those to me are, are symbiotic. It's, it is the idea that one would in everyday activities be willing to just show up be truthful be transparent um make a mistake own it keep going Hmm. and i think that you used some some excellent words there when you talk about like reliability and and consistency uh and and to be able just to show up in i mean you used to say you said this earlier but just showing up in the in the small things and and the small moments and the minutia of it all um and i a phrase that i know i gravitate towards a lot is this idea of like intentionality is the Mm -hmm. avenue to fruitfulness um and how if you are intentional with the small things it will again we're we're not in this for a greater we're not in this for the great reward we're not like we're, we're trying to be selfless but we do know that the more faithful we are are, the more intentional we are, there is fruitfulness that comes from it. There is reward that comes from it. Uh, and and how am I being a reliable person myself? Mm-hmm. How am I being a consistent person myself? And I do those gut checks and ask myself that. And what would people say of me? Mm-hmm. Heck, be willing to ask people, am I a reliable person? Am I a consistent person? So, so on and so forth. Um, even if you're not always right, I think that's a really good way, a good thing to parse out. You don't you, you don't always have to be right. Uh, and, and you can still be a consistent person. You mm-hmm. can still be a reliable person, even if you're not always accurate, because we can't always be Right. Uh, right. We are broken. We are Correct. messed up. We're prideful. We're going to. Uh, and so I think that those are very good uh, and crucial things that we need to understand when it comes to leading ourself. Um, a, a second quality or a second idea that comes to mind in the idea of how to lead when you're not in charge is um, around um, thinking critically. And and there is a, um, there's a, 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 a nuanced parsing out of this to say there is thinking critically and there's being a, cr- uh, and, and being a critical thinker. Can we sift through these two for a moment? Uh, of what does uh, what does thinking critically look like, uh, and how do we contrast that with being a critical person? Yes. So, sadly, the word the word critical is a meaningful, thoughtful word. It does mean the dissection of something, the sort of looking at it through multiple lenses, um, maybe of a microscope, hmm. where. We now often, English is kind of a, it's a young language, it's kind of a shallow language. We tend to associate critical with negative things. Mm. And so we say someone mm. is a critical person it, or they are uh, behaving critically. It is associated with an attitude of criticism, complaining, sure. um, coming up with roadblocks, problems, and no solutions versus the healthy habit of critical thinking, which is, deep analysis look Mm. taking something and you can almost envision yourself holding up an object and looking at it from turning it 10 degrees every few seconds and looking at it very thoughtfully Mm. Uh, that's that's critical thinking about a topic whether it's a small topic or a big topic Um, should I change jobs should I move states Uh, where should I go to college versus even a, a small decision. We don't need to look at it that critically, but it's, it's still the same habit of thoughtfulness. Um, there, that's the nuance for me. Hmm. I, I would say often that's exemplified by carefully choosing one's words. Yeah. So a critical thinker can often phrase a thought as a question to mm-hmm. start a conversation yep. where a person who is bringing criticism to the table will often lead with, this is why it won't work. Here's a definitive negative comment. Mm. 
um, without a solution provided, with the, without even an idea. Here's yep. just the eight t- reasons why this is dumb and won't work. <laughs> sure. um, and that, that's, it's exhausting. Yep. That's oh, exhausting yeah. for a leader where someone who um, is a critical thinker, it doesn't mean, for me as a leader, uh, it doesn't mean they agree with me. Uh, but I would prefer to have them sitting right beside me all the time. Yeah. Because if I'm bouncing my idea against someone who is thinking critically about it, looking at the long-term outcome Mm -hmm. and willing to pose thoughtful questions, um, make a suggestion together. We're going to get a better idea. Absolutely. Um, I, I value people who are critical thinkers (laughs) actually. Yeah. Uh, Well, and I, and I know I do too, and I can sometimes be a bit of an idealist or optimist and I need the realistic thinkers, uh, to critically think with me for me, uh, when I'm sometimes stuck with my head in the clouds, Mm -hmm. uh, in my optimism or whatever. And so I know that, but gosh, I do not want someone just to, just to be negative and, and just critical in the way that, or critiquing just with this tearing down or, or complaining notion that you said that they don't bring solutions mm-hmm. to the table, which is so often. So I think it's an honest question that we need to ask ourselves, when are we choosing to be uh, a critical thinker versus just being critical? And mm-hmm. your words, your spot on are, it is how you use your words. It is what you say that parses the difference between being a critical thinker and just being critical um, in a negative way. And and so that is something that when you think about how to leave when you're not in charge, your words are our words are way more powerful than we ever give them credit for. So how are we choosing to use those, whether we have a title or not? Uh, Another idea within how to leave when you're not in charge is this idea of uh, courageous followership Mm. uh, that I'm going to follow with courage. That's the over, that's the most basic definition I could possibly give for Mm -hmm. it. But take us deeper, take us three levels deeper. What is it? What does courageous followership look like um, in leading when you're not in charge? The way I experience courageous followership most frequently is either applying myself or seeing other people apply it um, in ways that look like setting, stating one's opinion, st- then setting your agenda aside, and being willing to uh, being willing to follow because you respect the person who is leading. Mm. So there, it does take a setting aside of one's own agenda to say, we disagree, but I respect you. I choose to respect you, Mm. whether you've earned it or you are in a position of authority over me. I can't, I can't, I can't control all of those dimensions. I can only control myself, right? I can't control all of those dimensions all the time. Um, I may not respect my current congressman. I'm just making this up. I'm not picking, I can't even, I can't even think of a name off the top of my (laughs) head. Um, I can't, I may not respect that person, but I have to respect the position they hold. Sure. I can vote, I can state my opinion, and then I have to courageously choose to follow them or I have to go live somewhere else. Like this, you know, sure. I'm, I'm making no. it a very basic example, yeah, no, but yeah. there is this reality, there's always a reality of having to follow someone or something that we don't love or agree with. And that's where the courage component comes in. If If you're in a work environment, being willing to state an I- a different idea, and then set it aside. Hmm. We're not talking about laws being broken or um, immoral activity here, right? Those are different circumstances. We're talking about basic differences of opinion or yep. differences of approach to solving a problem yep. uh, that we that we run into all the time. Oh, for sure. Here, here, this is such an interesting topic because I think it it creates a a bit of a plumb line through a lot of our conversation hmm. that. If one wants to courageously follow or even influence one's boss, you have to be cultivating that in small ways Mm -hmm. as a trustworthy, thoughtful person, showing yourself to be someone who is committed to their agenda for the company, um, uh, aligned with with broader outcomes. You sort of earn the right to state your opinion and then courageously follow. Choose to courageously follow follow yep oh, i love that i love that so much and uh and I, I appreciate even using that use the the 
phrase or the word plumb line. It decided just this, there's this line of consistency, of intentionality that I'm choosing to follow. It's not easy. The line is fine. I, I can go towards my, again, spewing my own thoughts, my own opinions, um, gossiping about my leader behind me. There's so many negative things that we can do uh, rather than saying, you know what? Yeah, uh, I may not always agree with my leader or yeah, I don't always have all the context uh, of well, this decision that was made, but I am trusting them. Uh, hopefully, again, I have a decent relationship with my, with my boss or my authority figures. Um, I'm submitting to my authority above me, and I'm just going to courageously follow. And, mm -hmm. and knowing that, yeah, they're going to make mistakes. Um, yeah, I'm not always going to like the decision. Um, but if they show themselves to be a, a, a respectable leader and an honorable leader, um, that we're going we're gonna to courageously follow them. And, and maybe it's a whole different other podcast topic of like, yeah, what do I do when I have toxic leadership above me? Like, how, mm -hmm. do, <laughs> how do I, should I honor my leader when I am, if they are a toxic leader above me? Or like, that's a whole other episode yeah. in and of itself. But like, um, so we don't want to make this, we don't, in, in talking about this, we don't want to make, make this like so simple of like hey like it's just 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 wash rinse repeat do it it's it, it's so much more difficult and mm -hmm. easier said than done um, mm -hmm. and we need to acknowledge that and, we, and I know that we are but we, we just want to want to state that courageous followership is so necessary but it's also easier said than done one other thing I would say about courageous followership and this is where I think you know if, if you're a believer listening to this you can just l really lean into praying into the situation mm -hmm. praying for your boss um, but even if you're not keeping your eye on the long game is always a way to respond well in a situation where one has to choose to be a courageous follower. Yep. So if, you're, if your long game is, I myself want to be an executive, I want to um, start my own business, I want to lead a business. If, if another path would be, I want to, I want to be a, a pastor, I want to be a, a, a pastor of a larger church, this is, you know, you're looking at your long game for your career. There, there is so much value in taking time to work for people that you disagree with oh. because you learn, yeah. like, we want instant gratification every possible way you can slice it. Yep. And that is Facts. not the way to, that's not the way to really learn things. Some things have to be, they have to be grown over time. Yep. They have to be pruned back. Yep. They have to be tried and tested and just being in a hurry constantly to get to the next step um, is not the way to really effectively learn. Yeah. If one chooses to courageously follow, I guarantee they will learn something. Yep. They might, they'll learn good things and also bad things. Sure. So it's, ne it's never a bad idea to sit there for just a minute like, oh, and just yeah. not, not jump ship because you disagree. Sure. Um, there's just a lot to learn. And again, we could we could pull on all the all the um, all the boundaries to that of like, well, how much time is too much? I don't I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Um, but but I can tell you that principle is always a good one because there's always mm -hmm. something to learn in that situation yep. versus making a snap decision when you don't agree. Oh, that's so profound, Tiffany. And I think that just to say that uh, when you courageously follow, just to reiterate what you said, you can learn good things on how to lead. Mm -hmm. And you can learn bad things on yes. what not to do. You're going to be able to do both. And I think that we need to be able to be perceptive and discerning on, um, on those things as we, as we follow our leaders above us. Okay, so one uh, other nuanced final idea that we want to, be, to look at is we just talked about following courageously. But what about challenging up this this idea that yes I have a voice and when do I have the right to use it as mm -hmm. as a follower and as a leader of a person of influence so uh, what does that look like challenging up when you are not the person in charge so I appreciate the way you even framed that up saying I have a voice and the right to use it mm. I often think challenging up needs to be entered into thoughtfully sometimes after one has earned the right mm. to be heard. Yeah. So showing up your first day at a new job and throwing out all sorts of ideas, you have no context. You don't know what's been tried before. Mm -hmm. I've been a consultant for 20 years. The number of times I have put my foot in my own mouth <laughs> showing up at another company <laughs> with 18 ideas of what they can do better, mm -hmm. people who have worked in that industry longer than I've been alive, people who've been at that company a long time, just hold on a second, like yep. sit down, be quiet, seek to understand. This is me telling you worst, like I could tell you war stories of the stupid things I've done. Mm, I'm um, so there. Learning, <laughs> just learning to observe and listen, yeah. ask questions, seek to understand. Yep. 
And also, like we talked about before, in the small, showing yourself to be a good employee, a credible person, someone who's there for the good of your, for the good of your fellow colleagues, for the good of your boss, trying to make your boss successful, make your yep. company better. Yep. All of these pieces tie together to make you someone who is trustworthy and would be credible yep. at even challenging up. Sure. If your boss thinks that you're in this for yourself because you probably want their job, hmm. what do you think the likelihood is that they're going to take your idea even if you're right? Yeah, pretty like, small. Z- like none. Yep. But if you've shown yourself to be someone who's there for the long for for the the longer haul, there for them, for like your intentions are good, yeah. then the idea of challenging up is a bit more is more well received. Yeah. And then Agreed. there's also some art to that of bringing a ch- challenging an idea and bringing a new idea again instead of in, going back to critical thinking versus being just plain critical, mm-hmm. um, bringing a another idea with a solution or a problem with a way to solve it as mm-hmm. opposed to just laying problems at your boss's feet. They yeah. have plenty. <laughs> sure. They have lots. Yes, they do. Um, so I think tying those, th- those two things together, uh, earning the right to, s- to speak, yep. bringing an idea and a solution, and then we go right back to courageous followership. Like, yeah. are you willing to take no for an answer? Oh, yeah. Even for a period of time so that you can just be on the journey, seeing where it goes. Yep. And I think that this idea of like, for it comes to mind for me is relational equity of like, oh my, ha- have yes. I, do I have the relationship with my boss That's a great uh, to be able to speak in mm-hmm. uh, and have they invited me in uh, mm-hmm. to be able to do that? And if they have, my goodness, speak, speak your truth, <laughs> like yes. be willing to speak yes. it now, do it humbly. Uh, don't be dumb, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but like, but be willing to courageously speak if your boss has invited you in. And and maybe that's even a clarifying question of like, to, for you to ask your boss of like, uh, hey, w- when do I have a right uh, to mm-hmm. speak up? Uh, are there, am I, and having that nuanced conversation with your boss might be a really healthy one to have. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so, uh, but challenging up is is so necessary. It's so difficult to be able to pursue healthily and well, but it can be, it, ter- it can, ter- can turn into some very beautiful conversations mm-hmm. uh, and growing conversations for you, for your boss, for your organization and right. team. Uh, right. And so, uh, but speaking of, I said you, your boss, your organization, your team, it comes to this word of audience, of oh. who is your audience audience mm-hmm. uh in the who you're talking to who you're fo- who you're following who you're leading where's your influence how does knowing your audience play into this whole dialogue and conversation it it does in a very um very subjective way so learning let's say we're talking about a team or whether it's a project team you're in school college or it's a project team at work um uh, understanding those just learning, um, cultivating those relationships first, I yeah. think is the right step. Um, learning what's going on with those individuals, what's driving them, which ones are also critical thinkers, which ones are looking for to, to come together and provide, uh, the best ideas they possibly can, mm. um, for your company or for your team. If your audience is, you know, family is always a little different tends to take a long, mm-hmm. we have, we have fun clashes in my family. I don't know what your family is like. Most families have fun clashes. Um, <laughs> it, it often takes a slightly longer amount of time, um, even though the relationships are cultivated, yep. um, to, to sort of change gear. And then there's, um, there's always the, the last audience of like what we're doing today. We don't know who our audience is, mm-hmm. you and I. So we're sort of anchoring in our common belief system and our identity, actually, yep. to have the courage to share our opinions from lots of varied experience yep. collectively. Yep. Um, and and we're, we're looking for the audience to take everything we're saying also with an element of grace. Like, these yep. are my experiences. This is what I have, I've learned and struggled through and succeeded in. Mm-hmm. And then, and I hope they are of use, but there are also pieces of things I'm saying that aren't of use. So please feel free to disregard those, you know? So audience I think can, can be incredibly subjective. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, we have covered, uh, Tiffany, we've covered so much ground here and, uh, we could cover so much more, uh, in this whole nuanced topic of how to leave when you're not in charge. Uh, help us with this as we land the plane of this whole conversation. Uh, if someone wanted to go and take the study further, uh, learn more about it, brush up more on these, some of the, the phrases that we've talked about, what are some books, some articles, some resources that you would uh, recommend for someone? I, I would recommend, um, 
Almost Anything by Patrick Lencioni, mm-hmm. Five Dysfunctions of a Team, Leadership Self-Deception, um, Adam Grant's Think Again, uh, Brene Brown, Almost Anything by Brene Brown yep. uh-huh. on Leadership. Um, Christopher Voss um, mm-hmm. writes about negotiation. He's may- maybe a little oh, less, yeah. um, less likely. And I'm really into, right now, um, John Mark Comer's Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Oh, so I think it's, it's, it's game-changing for me as a leader mm-hmm. um, to create that balance yeah, that's so good. And I think it would also be remiss for us to say that really this whole podcast uh, comes from some of the book, How to Lead When You're yes. Not in Charge. I forgot to mention that at the very beginning, shame on me, uh, that this really comes from Srogan's book of How to Lead When You're Not in Charge. And so um, if that is a book that you want to go uh, learn more from, from the topics we've been discussing, they come directly from his uh, book for sure. Uh, Tiffany, uh, man, can we just uh, end on a final word? of advice, uh, wisdom, caution, maybe, uh, mm-hmm. that comes to mind as we, as we finish out this episode together? Well, I think my, my word, <laughs> word of wisdom, if I could, would be um, there's always work to do. No matter mm-hmm. what level you're leading at, keep your personal why in check, focus on your identity. Often the other things fall into place. Yep. Um, and be courageous enough to be, be transparent. Yep. It's, it, that takes a lot of courage in a space where everything's being videoed, everything's being captured on TikTok, and it will live forever mm-hmm. you know, in the ether. Um, the, it takes a lot of courage to be transparent, but keep leaning into that. Yeah, I think that uh, I, I want to extract that because that was you said it so quickly and you moved on, but like, keep your why in check. Hmm. That's so good. And I want to. I, I that's a perfect way to end. Of why are you pursuing leadership? Why are you pursuing that title? Why are you trying to have influence? Why are you uh, in competition with this with this colleague? Why are you so uh, caught up on number? Like, there's a good why and there's a bad why. Yes. Uh, what is your why? I think that that's an excellent way to um, end as a challenging thought for all of us um, to remember a why as we do the what uh, of our leadership every single day. Tiffany. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. This is so rich and so profound. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for your willingness to dialogue with me. Uh, It's so much fun uh, to banter with you. It is so much fun. Uh, And so just thank you for the gift of this space and this time. Thanks for being a leader that I I get to look up to and to follow and to learn from. Um, And uh, it's just, uh, I'm I'm deeply appreciative. So just thank you so much. I'm grateful that you would have me. Thank you. And if you are enjoying what you're listening to, you're liking what you're hearing, would you be willing to give us a rating, hit the share button wherever you consume the content. And we hope that you join us next time as we continue to explore the art and science of building influential capacity. Catch you next time.